Thanks for joining us and welcome to the channel. This is a concrete filled steel post, sometimes called a lolly column, named after American inventor John Lolly. You can call it what you want, but I call it a pain in the butt because it is right in the middle of my garage. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike and I do videos on auto, home, and tech projects. In this video, we're going to be removing the lolly column in the garage. This is a big deal and it is not a do-it-yourself project. If this is done wrong in a garage or basement, you can cause severe damage to your home and danger to you and your family. But that said, it can be done and I'm going to show you how. My project has been professionally designed by a structural engineer and requires a building permit and must pass final inspection by local code enforcement, so it has to be done right. So why go through all this trouble? Well, let's just say that if you have a lolly column in your garage or basement, you already know how they can get in the way, breaking up what otherwise would be a large usable space. For me, working on my cars in the garage and making my videos, the column is constantly getting in my way. Parking the slightest bit off center can make getting in and out of your car like doing a vertical limbo. I've often had to let my passengers out before pulling in the garage, knowing they might be trapped and carrying something bulky in or out when the cars are parked runs the risk of getting too close and damaging your paint. I'm working with a New Jersey-based company called Lollygon, who specializes in lolly column removal and structural solutions like building repair and load-bearing wall removal. Rather than replace the existing support beams, they'll use steel channels and plates to reinforce and distribute the load so the column can be safely removed. They're going to take a C channel and they're going to mount it onto this side of the beam. And over here, they're going to attach a steel plate that spans the entire length of the beam. They're going to bolt those together and once bolted together, that will give the entire expanse the distributed weight so they can remove the lolly column. But wait, there's more! We're also going to kick this project up a notch by having Lollygon reinforce the front of the garage so we can knock out the middle column separating the existing doors. Then we'll install a gigantic single garage door completely opening up the space. This will let me pull the car into the center of the garage for better access and is a perfect complement to removing that column. In future videos, I'm going to show you some of the tech that I'll be using in this garage remodel, and I'll be building new workspaces and storage that lets us do woodworking and other large-scale projects in addition to auto mechanics, mods, and maintenance. Between removing the lolly column and removing this center post and opening this garage up into one gigantic bay, I can't wait to reinvent my workspace and I'm gonna take you with us on that journey. I will also be working with a local residential and commercial door installation company, Descar Doors, located in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Before the structural work begins, they will be removing our existing garage doors and openers and will return to install the new door and opener when the structural steel work is complete. Lollygon's techniques are relatively cutting edge and before any contracts were signed, Descar and Lollygon discussed the project so each contractor understood exactly what was needed to get the job done right. The day after the garage doors were removed, the Lollygon crew arrived right on time. It was a beautiful summer day in the low 70s, with a light breeze. The crew confirmed their measurements, and then got to work removing the drywall to expose the beams and the framing. Their work does not include replacing the drywall, so I was appreciative of the care they took not to remove material any further than they had to. I have to admit, I watched the demolition with mixed emotions. Was I doing the right thing? 
would an expensive complication pop up. As the drywall chunks were hitting the floor, I knew there was no going back. Hey, you want a tip? Don't wear gum-soled shoes on a construction site. While I was walking around the workers filming, I put a drywall nail straight up into the middle of my shoe. I was moving slow, so I felt the nail start to poke me and backed off. But if I had been moving quicker, I would have driven that nail home and wouldn't have been happy. It was work boots only for me for the rest of the project. I was surprised to see, so early in the project, that my lolly column was being cut off, flush with the floor. I guess it wasn't going anywhere and it was still being held in place by the concrete filling the tube and attaching it to the pad. If you're wondering, the lolly column doesn't just sit on the garage floor. It has its own pad, made with high pressure concrete that runs much deeper and stronger than the garage floor concrete. With the prep work done, it was time to start the structural steel reinforcements. Our garage measures 21 feet deep by 20 feet wide, so the steel C-channels and flat half-inch flitch plates were long and heavy. I was curious how they'd be moved about and held in place while they were being fastened. Here's my answer, the Genie Superlift Advantage SLA-10. Generically, this is called a manual material or contractor lift and today it's going to get a workout. This lift has a 1,000 pound capacity and a lift height of almost 11 and a half feet. The beam that's going to reinforce my garage door header was wrestled into place. You really get a good sense of how massive it is when you're up close. On my house, above the main beam is an exterior wall and a bedroom so there's a lot at stake. By removing the lolly column and the jack studs between the garage doors, we are effectively eliminating two of the four support points holding this crucial part of my house's structure. But the engineers at Lollygon and our local code enforcement are confident in the plans, so I can't wait to see how this is all going to come together. Meanwhile, using some bottle jacks and jack posts as temporary supports, the lolly column appears to be easily removed. And then, Mother Nature decided to crash the party. A violent summer storm and nearby crack of lightning took out the power grid, affecting 3,000 homes for the next three hours. Without power, the project couldn't continue, so I turned to my gasoline-fueled Generac generator. The battery was dead. Ah, poopy. And we didn't have time to charge it, so I grabbed my TacLife lithium polymer jump starter that can start your car or truck and even charge your phone. I'll put a link to a video I made in the description. I ran the crew a power line. They had just hoisted the main beam into place, but there was an alarming complication. Compared to the straight C-channel edge, it was clearly visible that my main support beam was sagging over one inch in the middle. After talking it through, I gave the go-ahead to raise up the center of the beam, which looked effortless. If you're ever in this position, make sure you check that all of your windows on the affected wall still open and close smoothly, and watch for drywall cracks, which could require some touch-up repair. I was lucky there was no problem in the rooms above. With the main beam reinforcement temporarily held in place, the half-inch steel flitch plate was moved into position. I have to tell you, I've shown the Generac generator in the past and I've received less than favorable comments, especially in my video, How to Fix a New Gas Can. Once started, my generator ran like a champ for the full three hours of the power outage, keeping the construction moving so it really saved the day. The beam and the reinforcing steel were cross-drilled and bolted in a staggered pattern every 16 inches. 
Yay! This is very exciting! The reinforced main beam was now holding up the house without the lolly column. It was time to reinforce the garage door headers into a single span so we could knock out the existing garage door separation. Jack posts were put in place while the trim was removed. And the studs in the door divider were pre-cut. The header beam was outfitted with a piece of 2x10 board and some angle iron. Everything will be drilled and bolted so the two beams meet securely and there's no chance of shifting in any direction. Yet another storm. Once again, a C channel will be bolted to the header, but this time it's held in place with lag screws since the other side of the wall is the stucco outside of my house and a steel backing plate or a flitch plate isn't practical. A lot of care was put into the junction of how the main beam ties into the newly reinforced header beam. This connection has to be solid because it's transferring the load of the main beam and the garage headers to just two outer support points when there used to be four if you count the lolly column and the center garage door divider. The weather remained sassy, but the power was eventually restored and it stayed on. I learned about a new tool watching as the intersection was cross-drilled. It's a high-power magnetic base drill designed to hold itself in place on steel with a cam that works like a drill press. This drill is the JHM MagForce made by Fine. Before long, the center separation was history. Wow, it's a big space for the lolly column once stood. Now I stand. I'm going to wrap up part one of my garage renovation right here. Please subscribe and turn on all notifications so you'll see part two where we will install the new garage door and I'll show you what I'm doing to really customize the space. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more, my contractor's contact info is in the description below. While you're down there, please leave your comments and questions and click the thumbs up to support the channel. Be good, be well, and be safe. I fixed it. And I'll talk to you real soon.